Yes. Hello, everyone. Good day, wherever you are watching the screen. I am Lawala Litunji. Welcome to Economics class. As we have all known that uh, NECO 2025 Economics will soon be written in the next few hours. Here we are with some questions to practice, which I believe we can also call the expected questions. Anyhow, you call it. You know, here our whole mission is to revise any information we receive or we have so that uh, whosoever that is writing that exam will be so lucky and to have distinction in that uh, subject so if you are a new viewer on this platform watching this video right now please do where to press the subscribe button turn on your notification button press your like and share button and put your comment in the comment box why our returning viewers i say welcome back to your class true neko 2025 normally should be written in the next few hours don't do with any information you receive here i will not say more than that what i need from you right now is to pick up your pen pick up your book and likewise let us revise together let us revise together don't skip any part do where to watch the video from beginning to the end so that you have enough information to answer tomorrow's questions so i will not say more than that now we have the following question on our screen you know in your question you will answer out of two out in section a you will be given two questions you have to pick any one all right on the question one we have defined opportunity cost okay let me just see question one here we have question i think we have question one here we have the question two here we have the question two here we have the question three here uh i think we have question four there as well we have question five I think this one we stop. We, we, we are we, our solving of question stop at question six. We stop at solving of question to number six that we are only solving six questions here on this video. But I'm very glad to let you know that in this video, question one, I mean, on this channel, question one, two, three will be solved. Why the remaining questions will be solved on our second channel, Estimator Aditunji Edu Consult. And likewise, please do where to be checking our comment box for further information that will be directing you on what next. On what next. All right, here are the questions. I will start answering one after the other. All right, um, now let's start answering it. In order to make the video not to be too long, what I did was that I have solved most of these questions on my paper. You know, I used to pick up my question and pick up my web paper and solve. But because I don't want the video to be too long, I have solved some of them. So I will just be explaining the question and likewise I will be putting uh, the response also on the screen. So without wasting time, question 1A said you should define opportunity cost. Before you can say opportunity cost, now looking at this question you are looking at the board, on the screen rather, you have many ways of asking questions. You can use your own English to, ex to define. That's why I will explain before I give you my own final answer. When you talk about opportunity cost, you are talking about what you uh, let go when you have a lot of things to get. Or when you have one or two things, more than one, two, two, th more than one things to get. Let me take it again. Take an instance, I have 1,000 Naira. And I want to buy book and I want to also buy food. The, I have a book that I want to buy. They are selling that book for 1,000 Naira. I also have a food that I want to buy as my dinner. Also being sold for 1,000 Naira. You remember, 1,000 Naira cannot buy the two. I will need to buy one and let go the other one. If I use that 1,000 Naira to buy food, definitely my opportunity costs is what? My opportunity cost is that book. That book that I don't, I don't buy or I'm not buying is the opportunity cost. That's why I cannot say my question 1A response that... Uh, let me bring it out. I said question one. A my answer. I said. Um, let, me, let me see where I put it. Oh my goodness. Okay, I think I put it here. That's why I said, uh, opportunity cost is the value of the next best alternative that is forgone when a choice is made. I have chosen food. I have let. Uh, I am let go in what the book. That book that I'm let go in is my opportunity cost. That is my definition and my response to question 1A. If you want to pick up my own, that is opportunity to pick up. If you want to use your own English, you can also modernize it. I pick up to the next question. The next question said, explain how opportunity cost 
applies to individuals, firms, and governments. How is opportunity cost being used individually? Like I've said, I just mentioned one now. Individual, that's talking about personal, my own personal issue now. That's individual. What about for firms? That is for maybe company or small company, whatever you call it, or small business. Uh, likewise, government. Ah, the government also doing this. Some of us may not know. You just say, ah, this government is good, this government is not good. This government also, they have, they are, everything we based on the money, the idea, the money coming in. If not put it that, that which one should they let go for this month that they cannot do this month, and which one should they take an answer? Maybe in a particular country where they, in a particular state where they are making three billion as their idea, and the salary for the whole workers there is three billion, and you expect that same government to construct bridge of three billion. Because the government will tell you, say, ah, this three billion, I would rather use it to pay my workers' salary than to do projects. You see, that government is not good. We have bad road. It's not constructing road. That is, that road has become alternative, and it has become opportunity cost. So, now, how did I explain my own in for you to, so, to see? I said for individual, choosing to buy a fool instead of saving money. That one is talking about most of us, yes, uh, Gen Z, whatever you call it, ourselves, buying a fool instead of saving money. So, your opportunity cost or is the saving is the saving that you have forgotten that is you are not saving now for the issue of firms how is it applied in the firms if a firm uses land for farming the opportunity cost could be renting it out that is i'll be like a ah i would prefer to use it for farming instead of using it to as you rent it out for somebody that this renting it out may be the that's the opportunity cost for that one. Now, talking about government now, choosing to build roads. I think I just mentioned something like that now. Instead of hospital, that this hospital has become opportunity cost. Now, like, ah, this government, it doesn't care for people's health. People are dying. He has chosen road as priority and he has let gone uh, what you call opportunity cost. I think I've answered one B. I go to one C right now. Use a production. Possibility call PPC to explain opportunity cost. For this one is a chart, you will see it on your screen. All right, I go to 1D. A student, I think this thing is talking about what I just said right now. A student has 1,000 Naira and can either buy a textbook or attend a seminar <laughs> with 1,000 Naira. How come? Textbook costs 1,000 Naira, while attending a seminar also costs the same price. If the student chooses the textbook, what is the opportunity cost? Put your answer in the comment box. I will not answer that one. Put your answer in the comment box i think i have explained better so put your answer in the comment box that's how we know if we are doing it together now i'm going to question two i don't want us to take time question two please make sure you put your answer in the comment box so i can confirm your answer question two define law of demand and law of supply that is you know what law of demand is talking about and law of supply when you talk about demand demand is talking about what favors the consumers when you talk about supply what favors the supplier the producers what am i saying you know when i say what favors consumer you know consumer will like ah this is something that is plenty quantity plenty quantity demanded when you hear the price of thing is so cheap now you see plenty of people going to buy that's demand people will be demanding for more when the price is down or when the price falls people will demand for more but when you call issue of supply that one talks about the producer the result will be like oh more people like people people like this thing let me keep on increasing the price. We will still keep on buying. Increasing the price. We will still keep on buying. That this supplier will be happy that oh, I'm making it. I'm making it. I'm making it. That's talking about that. What will not be the response from what I have written? As a response, I will show it to you right now. Yes, like I said, I want to show you my response for uh, which number it was that? Number 2A about the law 
of demand and supply. So what I wrote is this, you can see my write-up. I think you can see my write-up here. My write-up said, law of demand, as the price increases, the quantity demanded falls and vice versa. And the vice versa means that as the price decreases, the quantity demanded increases. Like I told us, when you know, when the price of the thing is falling, people will be demanding for more. That's talking about demand. But for the but for the issue of supply, the issue of supply is price is directly proportional to the quantity supplied. That is, as the price is increasing, the quantity supply also will be increasing. That is, the situation will be favoring the producers, the suppliers, incomparable to the issue of demand. I think these two as explained the law of demand and the law of supply and believe you can see remember the graph or your curve for demand curve and the curve for supply when you talk about the graph or curve of supply that one is directly proportional curve why that of um, demand is a falling down graph when i say falling down graph what do i mean maybe i should write something to let you know that what i mean by falling down for demand if it is demand demand graph will be like you know falling falling it's falling down that is, if I, I have price here, I have QD here. But for the issue of supply, it's directly proportional. Everything will be increasing. Power, price, supply. I believe you can get what I just did right now. So, now, I'm going to the next question because of our time. I'm going to question uh, 2B. List three factors that can cause a shift in demand curve. You want, to, you want a shift in demand curve. What are those factors that can cause a shift in demand curve but before i talk about that one i hope you can still remember that a lot of things can talk about demand curve let me for, for, for us explain that you know i have said demand is talking about majorly consumer demand is majorly talking about consumer it's a story of consumer now i am a consumer what is that thing that can change my demand my salary we talk my income if my income increases definitely i also will become a big boy in, in town what about the price or the salary my income decreases what happened or what is coming in decreases you know now i'll be like ah 101 you know the way i'll be buying also what will reduce so i don't want to talk about taste ah i don't want to be eating meat again i want to be eating fish you'll be demanding you change taste so what i let before we will that within your time let me take you there what are those things that can cause shifts number one i mentioned your income level if your salary increases or your income increases definitely your demand also we what we increase because we also be demand for something higher for something more i mentioned another one i say change in taste and what change the taste and preference that i don't want this one again i don't want this car, type of car again preference another one i mentioned is price of related goods that's talking about substitution or complement the situation whereby you have some goods uh, uh, i don't want to eat rice I want to buy indomie the price of rice is too high you go for substitute you substitute one for one or yam for beans with a situation where you substitute something that are very close that is no worry the price of this one is expensive let me buy, buy the one that is very close that's what we call a uh, substitution so i'm going to the next question under number two i'm going to question two uh c question two c said that should explain the effect of government subsidies on supply People are supplying or the producers are producing when they are, when government now introduce subsidy how will it affect those people that are producing that are supplying you know they can understand you have big companies like dangote and the likes now now if the government says that uh, all what you are buying from dangote they want to subsidize what are the effects that it will have on a company like dangote so that's what they are talking about what are the effects all right from my chart or from my write-up because i don't want to take us much time I said something that subsidy lowers production cost. So I take it again, subsidies lower the production cost. I mentioned that one. What again it does? Allowing producers to supply more at the same price. That same price because they have been subsidized, they don't have more power again. Those supply they don't have power again. So they just be producing like mm, so it has been subsidized, just be producing uh in the situation where it may not be for even it may not be for them. Another one I said that shifting the supply uh, that is the same price which may shift what shift the what supply curve to the what to the right i think i've explained that one i mean they did also mention they don't also ask us to mention many they just say explain and i uh, luckily i've explained two ways the effect 
of government subsidy on the supply. And I move to uh, question 2D.